when I touched my hand against the western wall and placed my prayer between its ancient stones, I thought of all the centuries that the children of Israel had longed to return to their ancient homeland. When I went to Starot and saw the daily struggle to survive in the eyes of an eight-year-old boy who lost his leg to a Hamas rocket, and when I walked among the Hall of Names at Yad Vashem, I was reminded of the existential fear of Israelis when a modern dictator seeks nuclear weapons and threatens to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Because we understand the challenges Israel faces, I and my administration have made the security of Israel a priority. It's why we've increased cooperation between our militaries to unprecedented levels. It's why we're making our most advanced technologies available to our Israeli allies. When I judge by his actions, he really has shown friendship. I don't judge a person just by what he says, but rather by what he does. So in fact, he was friendly to Israel and we appreciate it. I'm proud that even in these difficult times, we fought for and secured the most funding for Israel in history. I'm proud that we've helped Israel develop a missile defense system that's already protecting civilians from rocket attacks. No nation can tolerate terror. No nation can accept rockets targeting innocent men, women, and children. No nation can yield to suicide bombers. He is extremely strong support of Israel in regard to, to its security. Uh, I don't... Uh, Traditionally, President was supporting Israel in keeping its quality military age and taking care of its uh, security needs, but this administration is excelling in this, and it could not have happened without the immediate direct support of the President. So I don't think that anyone can raise any question mark about the devotion of this President to the security of Israel. We're going to keep standing with our Israeli friends and allies, just as we've been doing when they've needed us most. In September, when a mob threatened the Israeli embassy in Cairo, we worked to ensure that the men and women working there were able to get out safely. But I believe the leadership that the President of the United States showed on that night was a leadership of historic dimensions. It was he who took the ultimate decision that night which prevented what could have been a sad outcome. Instead of six men coming home, the arrival in Israel of six body bags. When the Durban Review Conference advanced anti-Israel sentiment, we withdrew. In the wake of the Goldstone Report, we stood up strongly for Israel's right to defend itself. When an effort was made to insert the United Nations into matters that should be resolved through direct negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians, we vetoed it. I can tell you uh, in a very um, categoric way, and I may, I believe also in an authoritative way, that uh, we have not had a better friend than President Obama. Another grave concern, a threat to the security of Israel, United States, and the world, is Iran's nuclear program. And that's why our policy has been absolutely clear. We are determined to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. And that's why we have imposed the most comprehensive, the hardest hitting sanctions that the Iranian regime has ever faced. We haven't just talked about it, we have done it. And we're gonna keep up the pressure. And that's why, rest assured, we will take no options off the table. So I would not underestimate the commitment not to Israel and not to the struggle against terror. Go and ask Osama bin Laden, go and ask the Hakanis, go ask a dozen of other of quite uh, pretentious uh, terror leaders whom you cannot contact today because of the readiness of this administration to take action, not just to talk, but at the right moment to take action. I spent my lifetime in uniform, in, not in TV interviews, but... Uh, uh, doing things with my own hands, I know to appreciate this. Let us be honest with ourselves. Israel is surrounded by neighbors that have waged repeated wars against it. 
Israel citizens have been killed by rockets fired at their houses and suicide bombs on their buses. Israel's children come of age knowing that throughout the region, other children are taught to hate them. Israel, a small country of less than 8 million people, look out at a world where leaders of much larger nations threaten to wipe it off the map. The Jewish people carry the burden of centuries of exile and persecution and fresh memories of knowing that 6 million people were killed simply because of who they are. Those are facts. They cannot be denied. The Jewish people have forged a successful state in their historic homeland. Israel deserves recognition. It deserves normal relations with its neighbors. I think we're, we're closer today in our two positions than we've been probably ever time before. The Obama administration is committed to a two-state solution based on direct negotiations and dealing with all the core issues. That is precisely the Israeli position we see totally eye to eye on that. We stand with Israel as a Jewish democratic state because we know that Israel is born of firmly held values that we as Americans share. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for standing with Israel and supporting peace through direct negotiations. We both agree that this is the only way to achieve peace. Standing your ground, taking this position of principle, which is also, I think, the, the right position to achieve peace, I think this is, a, this is a badge of honor. And I want to thank you for wearing that badge of honor and also I, to express my hope that others will follow your example, Mr. President. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. America's commitment and my commitment to Israel and Israel's security is unshakable. It is unshakable.